All right. Now we're doing Freight Code Camp, JavaScript algorithms and data structures, basic JavaScript, iterate through an array with a for loop. So a common task in JavaScript is to iterate through the contents of an array. Very common. Uh, one way to do that is with a for loop. This code will output each element of the array R to the console. So this code right here. We're going to do const R equals this array right here, 10 to 6, going up, going down, I guess, decrementing, let's say it. And then uh, we'll say 4, let I equals 0, while I is less than R dot length, I plus plus. All right? And then we're going to do a console dot log R at I. So basically, this one is going to go from 0 from index zero to index is less than r.length. So r.length on this is one, two, three, four, five, right? But the index is zero, one, two, three, four. So cleverly enough, five would be the one that's off the screen or out of the array, the one that's just not there. So it will hit each and every one of these if we do something like this, all right? It's just one of the old tricks of arrays, of iterating through arrays. So let's go through this. Remember that arrays have zero based indexing, which means the last index of the array is always index, pardon me, is always length minus one. So five minus one, zero, one, two, three, four. Five minus one is four, right? And so our condition for this loop is i is less than r dot length, which stops the loop when i is equal to the length, all right? In this case, the last iteration is i equals 4, i.e. when i becomes equal to r.length minus 1 and outputs 6 into the console. A little confusing, isn't it, guys? No big deal, all right? Hopefully, you guys get it. Uh, when it's r.length, I'll just say it one more time, just why not? When it's r.length, it's always referring to the one that's off the, that's outside of the array, the one right after the last one, all right? Uh, so, do, 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 do. so then I increases to five and the loop terminates because I is less than R dot length because, pardon me, because I is less than R dot length is false. Hopefully that makes sense. So once it hits five, it's going to be false because five is not less than five. R dot length is never less than R dot length. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, so now we're going to declare the initialized, pardon me, we're going to declare and initialize a variable total to zero. We're going to use a for loop to add the value of each element of the my r array to the total. So we're just going to sum up each one of these numbers, right? So first things first, we're going to say something like this. We're going to say uh, total equal, no, 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 no. We're going to say let total equal zero, all right? So we're going to come down here and do a for loop after that, for, and then we'll say, inside of these uh, parentheses, we'll say let i equals zero, so that's index zero, while i is less than my r dot length, we're going to say i plus plus, all right? And like before, my r dot length is the one right off the, right outside of the array, all right? So whatever's less than that, whatever index is less than that, which is every single one of them in the array. So let's come down over here and have some curly braces. And we'll say this uh, total plus equals I like that. And we'll come down here and do console.log, console.log. And we'll say total like this. And we can see 10 is the answer. So let's get this so we can look at it at, pardon me, at each iteration as it goes through. And we'll say, uh, we'll see it says, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was dumb. Anyway, we're going to say uh, my R at, there we go, at I. I don't know if I should re-record this. I'll make that decision during editing. So it starts at 2, the plus 3, which is 5, plus 4, which is 9, plus five, which is 14, plus six, which would be 20. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, sorry for messing it up the first time. No big deal, run the test. Looks good and submitted. All right, now we're on to nesting for loops and we'll see you next time.